Hello, uh, Godspeed. Um, I know I've been a little bit harsh on your previous videos uh, by about all telekinesis and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I want to stress something, which um, I do actually... I saw the original film phenomena back when I was a kid. Um, I'm 22 now. I was only maybe 11, 10, maybe 11 when I actually saw that video. Sorry, when I saw that film, when it first came out in theaters. And I actually thought it was one of the best films I had seen. Um, you know, and I still think to this day it was one of the best films I've seen in a long time. And one of the things which, and I actually look at it from the perspective of a skeptic now, but not because of the fact that I'm actually trying to, de you know, not because of the debunk of John Gregolter or because of psychic phenomena or anything, but because of the fact that I actually agree with the one premise in the film, and that was the whole concept of trying to understand more of what's actually out there. The problem is, is that there is a fine line between skepticism. There is a fine line between skepticism and pseudo-skepticism. And um, the thing is that pseudo-skepticism can actually be going both directions. And um, what it is, is it's just simply a lack of desire. And, th and this is on the popular level. And this is why belief, and this is why, why um, on my other videos I've made concerns about um, trying to avoid narrow-minded usage of arguments or, or critical thinking fallacies or anything like that when trying to understand the actual truth. Just try to, you know, work the bare-bones facts and try to get, uh, you know, as much information as possible. Because the thing is that the universe is big. The universe is, well, I don't know if it's connected. We're connected by a bunch of physical laws at any rate. I mean, you know, there are physical laws which share us. There's, you know, we are all matter, some part energy, some part matter. I mean, there are, the universe is seven, to the best of my knowledge, the universe is roughly about 20 billion light years in diameter. 20 billion light years. There is a lot that can happen in the universe. There is so much wonder. And heck, psychic phenomena, including telepathy, precognition, microsychokinesis, possibly even telekinesis, may actually play a part into that. We don't know. Further research is necessary. You see, that's the thing which, 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 in which um, you know, I've I've heard a lot of people when they when they call things like the Center for for Freedom of Inquiry, uh, you know, like they they try to suggest that psychic phenomena and stuff like that are automatically wrong, just purely because of the fact that they've been associated. That's guilt by association with the supernatural. Dean Radin pointed this out in one of his videos where he talked about, um, uh, or was it actually, or was it George Hansen, a fellow skeptic, who pointed this out. Um, anyway, they were oh no, it was George Hansen in one of his essays called it "An Overview of Skycop and the Skeptics," and I've already posted it in one of my other sources, uh, in one of my other videos. Is that um, certain groups have um, narrow-mindedly misinterpreted what science has become? Um, there's always been a process of this. Um, that you know that whatever might threaten the paradigm, they often try to encroach upon. And the thing, of course, is though, is that that is one of the reasons about where I draw the line between pseudo-skepticism, which is basically not wanting to take an open-minded look at any of this sort of stuff at all, and true skepticism, which is where I'm at, which is sort of an agnosticism, where something might be possible, we just want further data on it and further research, and um, again, if we see a possible variable, um, we, want te we want it tested for, you know, to make sure that that particular variable is not the cause of what's going on. You know, um, not just rather than, well, I mean, in my case, as a skeptic, I'm trying to be actively researching about it. If I see a possible variable, but some, if I see something that looks good, but there's a possible flaw which is in there, I want the person to try to replicate it while dealing with that particular flaw. That's the idea of scientific progress. Or if not, then, you know, if there's if I have access to the resource to test for it independently or replicable, then I will do it. Uh, you know, like or or somebody else. Like that's the whole concept here. And. The whole thing about phenomena was the fact that people started looking to messiahs or saying, well, why can't we do it? Therefore, it must be a trick. It's that same narrow-minded mindset. And you were right to point that out, is that there is a sort of an interconnection in energy and that we should be open-minded. And I agree with you on that point. Hence why I still am so encouraging you to try to, on those other videos where I listed the possible variables for you to try to control against, do control against them. Test for them. See to make sure, you know, give me a demonstration that, you're, that there is something real out there. Because I'd love to be able to explore that all the further with you, if there, if you really do have this capability. So please, follow according to the controls I suggested, um, you know, dealing with those particular possible variables to eliminate cheating, and then I'll talk to you. Anyway, that's my piece for tonight. Toodles.